Okay, so in this video, we will consider an example of higher derivatives and implicit differentiation. So here's the question. We want to find the second derivative of y with respect to x if xy squared equals x plus 1. So we know that an equation of this type defines y implicitly as a function of x. So it's not because you don't see exactly y equals f of x, but you cannot think of y as a function of x. And here if you think of it, there are actually two functions of x. If you divide by x, y squared is x plus 1 over x, and so y will be plus or minus the square root of x plus 1 over x. So you could find the second derivative this way by cheating, by finding f explicitly as a function of x, but here we won't. We will use implicit differentiation because in more complex examples, it may not be possible to solve for y as a function of x. Okay, well to find the second derivative, we have to find first the first derivative. Well, again, since y is a function of x, and both sides are equal, they must have the same derivative with respect to x. Well, we have a product between x and y squared, so we must use the product rule. Derivative of x is 1 times y squared plus x times the derivative of y squared, and again here with respect to x. So you have to be careful to apply the chain rule properly, which will give you 2y times the derivative of y with respect to x. That is the derivative of the left-hand side equals the derivative of the right-hand side, which is obviously 1. Well, let's now solve for dy over dx. Subtract y squared on both sides. And now divide both sides by 2xy. And we have now isolated dy over dx. 1 minus y squared over 2xy. So we have our first derivative. Of course, to find the second derivative, we must differentiate the first derivative. But our derivative as a function of x and y is this. So by taking the derivative of this expression, we will find our second derivative. As we have a quotient, we must use the quotient rule. So, derivative of our numerator with respect to x, again applying the chain rule carefully, we get negative 2y dy over dx. Derivative of our numerator times the denominator 2xy minus the numerator 1 minus y squared times the derivative of our denominator, 2 being a constant multiple, leave it up front, times the derivative of x times y, so here we have again a product, so we use the product rule, derivative of x is 1 times y, y, plus x times the derivative of the other function, y, which is dy over dx. And of course the whole thing is over, 2xy all squared, which is, if you want, 4x squared, y squared. So here's our second derivative, but we want ultimately our second derivative as a function of x and y only, just as the first derivative. But if you look now, our second derivative is a function of x and y, but also of dy over dx of the first derivative. Well, we can easily replace dy over dx as a function of x and y, as we have just previously found the derivative dy over dx as a function of x and y. So now we just replace, and the rest of the work will be algebraic simplifications. So, negative 2y times dy over dx, let's replace, times 2xy 
here, I will bring the negative in, so that will give me y squared minus 1, and I'll put the 2 up front as a plus 2 times y squared minus 1. Then here, y plus x times dy over dx. Again, we substitute 1 minus y squared over 2xy. And the whole thing is again over 4x squared y squared. And you see now, as far as taking the derivative, or at least finding the derivative, and the second derivative as a function of x and y, we're done. We have both. Of course, we can do better than this. Let's now simplify, so the rest is simply algebraic simplifications. Okay. Well, 2xy over 2xy, that goes away. Here, there's an x over an x, right? x times this over all of 2xy. So we can cancel the x. These are obvious simplifications. Now, if you notice here, there's a 2, there's a 2. We can factor this. And here we have 1 minus y squared. Here, y squared minus 1. Let me bring in the negative in here. So if I do so, then this will become y squared minus 1. And that, as I've said, is just by bringing in the negative. So bring the negative times this gives you y squared minus 1. This is now gone. And then we have two common factors. If you factor the 2, so now it's gone from both terms, and factor the y squared minus 1. Now we'll put this one over the 4x squared y squared to simplify our really big fraction. So what are we left with? Well, here there's just a y that's left over plus, and here we're left over with y, and there's nothing multiplying it. So y plus, <coughs> sorry, y plus y plus this term. 1 minus y squared over 2y. Of course here, I'll be a little sloppy, but y plus y is 2y. So let me cancel this and just put a 2 there. And to simplify next, we want to combine both of these as a single fraction. So what we'll do is we'll multiply 2y by 2y over 2y. Now we're almost done. So 2, y squared minus 1, over 4x squared y squared. We'll cancel these two the next step. Times, well 2y times 2y is 4y squared, plus 1 plus, oh sorry, plus 1 minus y squared, over 2y. And now we can arrive at our final answer. So we can cancel well, the 2 with the 4 as an over 2, or the 2 with the 2 here. This 2 multiplies everything on top. This 2 multiplies everything on the bottom. We can cancel those two together. Here we can factor, if we want, y squared minus 1 factors as y minus 1, y plus 1. Takes care of this. What else? This term will be, well, 4y squared minus y squared is 3y squared plus 1. This doesn't really factor, so we leave it like this. That takes care of this numerator, 3y squared plus 1, over 4x squared y squared y, but y squared y is y cubed. So all over 4x squared y cubed. And there you have it. This is our second derivative. 
of y with respect to x fully simplified as a function of x and y only. So there is no more dy over dx. And that's it. And of course we could do the same thing for the third derivative. Here we have the second derivative of y with respect to x as a function of x and y only. Differentiate both sides will give you the third derivative. Of course when you differentiate this dy over dx will pop up again but you can replace it by its function of x and y and the rest will be simplifying algebraically the derivative to arrive at a simple third derivative. And that's it. This is how you do higher derivatives or combine higher derivatives with implicit differentiation.